Uh, we will now move back to public comment. And again, a public comment session will be limited to five minutes. Please come forward to the microphone. And as you know, the microphone is not working. So speak up, say and spell your name for the city clerk. Uh, be respectful. If you have a cell phone, please turn it off. If you're wearing a hat, please remove it. Thank you. You have five minutes. First speaker, please. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> uh, I live at 37 Middle Street in Binghamton, and I have been a resident in Binghamton for 31 years. For those 31 years, I uh, worked at Binghamton High School, where um, we have a very diverse student population. And I believe that the immigrants and the refugees that have come to this community have enriched our community. I believe uh, opposition to having uh, Syrian refugees uh, is rooted in fear. And fear is something that we must Walk That's what courage is about. There is a litany against fear by Franklin Herbert. It goes like this Fear is the mind killer, it is the little death that brings total obliteration. I must face my fear. I will allow it to over through me. And when it is gone, I will turn the mind's eye inward, and only I will be free. This country was founded on courage, on our ability to walk through our fears. Do we want to be courageous and stand? when we die, or do we want to be kneeling in fear? Ben Franklin, a founding father, said, if you trade security for freedom, you deserve neither. Please, we need to have courage and mercy and welcome, welcome diversity. Welcome our immigrants. Do our fair share. Look at what Germany and Canada are doing. Really, really. Courage is required. It is the foundation of this And I, I do believe that we welcome anyone. I'm going to read something tonight, Bill. Give you a chance to pull that up. My name is John Solak. Uh, I've spoken here for 40 years. And uh, this is a first for me, and it doesn't have anything to do uh, with uh, what's on the table now, so it, 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 it doesn't matter.
of the city of Bingham. Whereas an increasing number of resolutions are offered up each year, that while they are important, important to individuals and groups, are simply not going to be resolved by any action or debate by Binghamton City Council. Whereas the Binghamton City Council has no legal authority on state, federal, or global issues, and this re resolution forbidding non-binding resolutions to be generated internally by committee or presented to or voted on by the City Council will allow the meeting of the Binghamton City Council to be Binghamton centric and focused directly on city business. Be it resolved by the actual city council and signature of the mayor that non binding resolutions are hereby written to come out of the city council committee, committee, submitted, put forth on the agenda, discussed, or voted on by making the city council. Now, that, doesn't, and I, that does not prevent this chamber from being used for any issue at all. We did it once with the sex offenders. We rented the chamber, we got the chamber. We contacted the Time Warner Cable. We had a very wide ranging, free flowing, uh, uh, more than five minutes of discussion by each person regarding this issue. So, this chamber and this cable TV company can be used to put forth all the various national issues that are coming forward. But I value you time, and I think you should too. Because you've got to ask yourself when people come in with non binding resolutions, why don't they go to the county? You know what? Because the county can tell the town so they don't even allow for public comment at the county meeting. And much of this stuff that you've been talking about, a lot of this stuff, is even more in the purview of the county than it is for the city. So uh, you've got a uh, you've got a lot of business ahead of you in 2016. And uh, as much as I'm for the free exchange of ideas, I also my my infatuation with local government is because you can. Uh, do something a little bit. I mean, if you can't change a four way stop, the UN's not going to talk to you about an A test major. So, uh, I want to return to the city. We used to have a saying in the Green Party, I remain the only Green Party candidate ever in the city council. 1999, I believe. We had a saying then in the Green Party local solutions to local problems. And that's what I would like this council to do in 2016. Focus on the local problem, and we've got a whole big boatload of and leave the other discussions uh, for other venues and other forums. I think that that would do uh, very well. Uh, now, for Allison, I want you to pay your extra tax on the way out, write your check uh, to the city uh, uh, treasurer, and uh, I don't know what the policy I guess I'll assess the 500 now. It's not a chance. If you don't come out with the 500, can't Thank you, John. Next speaker, please.
Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Samantha Lila, E H L O G, uh, and I'm a volunteer with the American Civic Association. I'm here to speak in support of the resolution proposed to follow the refugees to Binghamton. Uh, and this is purely a statement that says if and when we get refugees from wherever they may be, or that we accept them. It's not binding and it has no hold on if or when how many refugees we will receive or where they will come from. It's just stating that in light of the recent hate that they were taking lives about that as a community. Um, and me, myself, I'm the third generation of an immigrant family, as many people in Binghamton and surrounding areas are from immigrant families. I uh, was born and raised in Binghamton, uh, part of my family, which immigrated to the United States from Syria. Um, I've been in this community for close to a decade, or close to a century. Um, within just that part of my family, we have prominent and successful business and individuals with important positions, as well as the other side of my family, from places like Italy, they are all productive and engaging members of this community. America was built on the back of former foreigners from different countries and different religions that all came here for opportunity, and Binghamton, no less, is made of the same people. And I've seen this community come together for many causes that I've grown up with, uh, regardless of their individual differences. And if we can come together as a community to support the victims of local tragedies with benefits and fundraisers, I'd love to see us come together in the same way for victims of a much larger tragedy. In response to the comments just made, I'd like to bring up uh, Buffalo, which I mentioned in the previous meeting. Uh, similarly to us in the sense of economics, they've had almost 10,000 refugees from various countries come to them in the past 10 years, and it has helped tremendously revitalize their city. They have changed the overall vibe of the area and made it a more desirable place to live. This is the a statement made by Denise B. Hag, Director of Refugee and Employment Services, and they come in to um, empty houses and empty storefronts that they have brought up the property values and made the city a more welcoming area. And the fact is that if we give these people the chance to come here, the chance to be American, and the chance even just to be a big American resident, they will prosper because these people will want to work and they want to be part of the community. And the fact that they would be here on, on Social Security and what are the new things they would maybe at the beginning. But how many people do we have that are here now that have been citizens their whole lives that are from here, that use the system, that are relying on others, that have no desire to work and go any farther in life? And these people have these activities. I would also like to state to the council that we started a petition uh, from the resolution and we have just over 550 signatures from people in the area, um, as well as the support of individuals, uh, as well as the YWCA and the Human Rights Commission. And in addition, uh, some of those who signed the online version of the petition left comments uh, that I'd like to read. Um, Margaret stated that I'm signing to this is what America was supposed to be all. A place of freedom and refuge. I am a Christian and my faith calls me to extend hospitality to a stranger, the alien, and even my enemy. Binghamton is in desperate need of people that are willing to work, to build their lives here, to be excited about calling this place home. Maybe a new wave of immigrants is just what we need to help in the long term to revitalize our community. Charles stated, while I want the government to do what it can to that refugees, I cannot want to live by fear on the sidelines and watch thousands perish who could have been saved. It's a risk of one more take. I do not want a community and a nation with a legacy of asking for this innocent. William stated, I strongly believe in welcoming new immigrants to our community, especially those who are seeking violence and oppression. It is our heritage as Americans that they have always been strong in the community. Ben stated, I'm signing because I'm proud to be a big Estonian and we deserve to be put on the map as a welcoming city with much, much better to be known for than cloudiness and depression. We are a community that is better than both and much more. Thank you for your time, and I would just like to say that I urge you to see the benefit of this resolution and be to you. Thank you. I 
have the right to read one of the two letters of support from individuals and businesses that was sent to the American Civil Association in support of this resolution. This one is by the chair of the Institute of the Human Rights Commission, Stacey Lovett-Dance. Be it known that the City of Binghamton Human Rights Commission stands with the American Civil Association in welcoming of Syrian refugees fleeing persecution and the violation of human rights. The City of Binghamton has a long history of welcoming those facing persecution and human rights violation with their own. Although the Refugee Act was passed in the 1980s, Binghamton began a humanitarian effort in 1939 to Therefore, to remain in concert with our rights and history and to fulfill our charge, we, the Human, uh, Human Rights Commission of City Binghamton, encourage the Binghamton City Council to pass this resolution while considering refugees fleeing their home. Violations of human rights and discrimination of any kind should not go unnoticed. For we all have the responsibility of assisting those in need to prevent human suffering. Thank you. Good evening. I'm speaking on behalf of the WY, the YWCA. The YWCA at Binghamton and Blue County Incorporated is sending this letter to express our support for the proposal now before you for a resolution regarding the welcoming of refugees into our community. The YWCA believes it is important by all the community concerns at the end of the county, Binghamton, and back to the The YWCA believes it is important to recognize that refugees attempting to flee violence and instability in their home countries deserve our compassion and assistance, not fear and bigotry. Welcoming refugees is an important humanitarian step for our community to take, and it benefits both the refugees and the communities they settle in. The city of Binghamton has benefited greatly from the contributions of immigrants and refugees from many countries for many years. In the early years of its operation, the YWCA of Binghamton and Broome County served as an official office of the United States Travelers Aid Society. Hundreds of women and their children fleeing from terrible situations in foreign countries came to Binghamton on the train directly from Ellis Island. The YWCA helped them to find homes and settle in the community. There are numbers of citizens living here today who are direct descendants of those women. Please endorse this proposal and let the city of Binghamton go on record as being a welcoming city. We would also request that this letter of support be read into the record. Thank you very much. And on a personal note, go ahead, go ahead. Whether or not you are a descendant or, or if you have family that is a first generation in the country, you know, just putting yourself in somebody's shoes that is going through this current situation and just, you know, as a, as the letter said, humanitarian approach and um, love is love out there. We need to really, you know, look out for our fellow brothers and sisters. Thank you. Church over or carry the church down or 
what are our uh, resolutions had to go up this hearing? So uh, I got used to writing whereas and including there everything that might move the power to be to say yes to what was going to be resolved. So I was reading over these whereas. I, I agree with them all. The more part that I think the guy when we had to go to the United I think they were very well done. No need to go into the whereas. It's something that is to be resolved, but we want to be sure that get resolved. And of course, uh, once I knew that I would be coming here tonight and uh, going to say something, uh, I wanted to uh, make it as personal as I could, especially to the people of the Big of the uh, because I, you all know there is a lot, a wide variety of backgrounds from all over the world. Every color here at is big who have come, who have added so much to our community, and they certain, certainly uh, are to be respected and to be applauded for what they've done over the years. Now, I came down to big over 50 years ago, so I've been around here for a while. I never lived in big until I retired officially. Western room, or I was at Hillcrest, or I was some out in the Eastern room, but I finally retired and settled in Binghamton. And so Binghamton is the center of what's going on now. Um, and beginning to wonder what could I say about refugees? Christmas is here. It's coming. The world is celebrating celebration because Jesus and Mary and Joseph were sort of sent refugees in Bethlehem. Uh, and uh, there, what happened there is very important to a lot of people. But if you look, it's, you don't have to search very far in the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, the Christian scriptures. I suspect in some other scriptures that I have read around uh, that uh, hospitality, caring for the needy, watching out for the widow and the orphan, those who don't have enough those who don't have no to go, to be open to them. And uh, there's a lot there that can be a big help to us and to, to see how it all fits into the picture. Then I started thinking of well, what specific things could I bring up? Well, one of the things that I learned when I first got here, which way in jail? People coming in, getting off that island, and which way in jail? And my mother told me that uh, there is, uh, when the Wall people came over and settled up into a uh, Little village, uh, born in Utica, where I was born, uh, there were a lot of wealthy people who went out there. I can't tell you, it's just north of Utica, and uh, our president congressman happens to live up in that area. Darnold is only uh, maybe a half a mile away from uh, But that has nothing to do with it right now. But, uh, Father, one minute. What? One minute. Okay, okay. Well, the most important thing about it is that one of the things that came to my mind was uh, first, first school open, one, I was teaching about my religion. One of the first classes, there was a young lady uh, named Mary Corbin. And I think we all remember Mary Corbin. She was one that was killed in the American Civic Association faculty. And uh, she was, uh, no, she spent time in a defensive, this 
and then Austrian family came over, settled here, me and the family, they worked so much for the area, and uh, I think that's where it's going. And uh, there are many other things that I could say, but I don't want to keep you on so long. But let's just remember that orphan, widow, helping the poor, reaching out to those in need, hospitality, going back, not centuries, but millennia, in the cultures of the people of the world. So hospitality is very, very important, very, very real. And so uh, I certainly hope that the uh, resolution passed with all the whereas and gets resolved. Thank you, Father. Speakers from outside the area. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Robert Todd. Challenge, paper risk. 
But let's not just see it's a troublesome issue, but to do what is just. Very good support. We invoke John Parra on Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to first say I can get up on it. My name is Michael Hoskins. I'm a homeland here in Bainton. And I was not intending to come and speak to them. That was my purpose. But I believe that the committee, like speaking to the council, should hear all sides on this issue. And I have no doubt that everyone here has a wonderful heart just as all of the Americans as the city does, and that they believe this is one of the great things we should do. I disagree. I believe that's incorrect. This is no different than the same issue that's being discussed and was already discussed in Utah. And in Utah, the uh, Democrats, or several Democrats, that put forth opposition to this very same idea, a resolution to welcome refugees. Utica, by the way, receives about 10 times as many refugees as we do. And that issue, at the end of the day, was put on hold because it was determined that the city council doesn't have the authority, which is why this is an unpopular resolution. Now, I don't have to prepare for it, but please follow me on this. First, the resolution, by its definition, by its statement as a welcoming resolution, implies that we, as people of Binghamton, New York State, and America, do not welcome refugees. That's correct. We take, in seven, we take in approximately 70,000 refugees every year. Our city takes in dozens of refugees, and or have, and we will continue to do so, no matter what is society today. So I wish to throw out that first law that is implied by definition in this resolution, which I know many people find an answer because it applies all of it. Second, I want to address another point about this resolution. We've had many people speak about the refugees that are coming in. They're coming in from out. President Obama has already made that decision. It's already been happened. We know that Governor Cuomo has already made a decision and he's going to have them come in into our state and we disperse. We don't know where we're going. Well, you know, we know that several dozen of them. We will probably receive some as well. That's fine. We are a welcoming community. We are a welcoming people. We always have. We will welcome them when we show up. But let us also keep in mind that this is a discussion that is for the American people. We have not had a chance on the national under President Obama to be able to speak our voice. We have not had a chance under Governor Cuomo to speak our voice. These were decisions that were made for us and not with us. And today, I have to say, I am upset because this discussion is going on so rapidly that the majority of people in this, in this city do not know. I was on the radio three days ago, Friday, on Friday, speaking about this issue on air, the host of that radio program was not aware of this. I have spoken to people across this entire city, both in email and in person, and no one is aware of this. We are rushing this. If this is an issue that we are to take up, this is an issue to be taken up in 2016, as we have more information, as the public gets to be aware of it, so that we can then make a decision as a city. Last thing I would say, one of the most important things that we have to look at is that whether we have refugees in this city or not, whether or not the concerns of those refugees are in terms of the safety for us is addressed at the national level, which is in dispute. We have to remember that our main focus must be that we have a city that stands right at 6.7% unemployment, which is higher than the entire state. We have 33% poverty in this city. 
We have 47% of the children in the city living in poverty. We need job work. We need to be able to take care of all. We need to be able to help those who come here from New York City, from Zimbabwe, Rwanda, or wherever else they may be. You have before you a document, which are petitions. I know the online petition included individuals from Rwanda, from Florida, from Texas, from California. These are not the voices of the people in the city. Now, the documents you may have may be set up I can't tell you this. They do not reflect the 40,000 plus people of this city. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Claudia Stahl. I'm an 84th age on the street in Binghamton. Um, I'm here tonight as a resident of the city of Binghamton. <coughs> I urge you to vote in favor of the resolution declaring our city to be a welcoming community to refugees. While the measure is purely symbolic, I believe it is important and necessary that we make this statement publicly and that we do so now. My wife and I have chosen to live, work, and raise our children in this community in good part because of its diversity, compassion, and inclusiveness. It is fallacy to believe that these characteristics endanger or weaken our city. In fact, our willingness to welcome and care for the stranger makes our community stronger and richer and better. Please take a stand in favor of openness and acceptance and inclusiveness. Our kids and the rest of the world are listening. This is important, especially at this moment in our shared history. Thank you, Leah Webb and Terry Renia, for your service over these many years. Um, you have my utmost respect and admiration, and thank you all for your consideration of my views. Derek Slimskeeter from the south side of Binghamton. Um, obviously, some of guys have been here for me for a while. Um, I wanted to correct some, um, some statements that were made by the man that spoke with me, that spoke uh, for me a little minutes ago. Um, it is a historical fact that the United States has not opened its arms to all refugees. In fact, up until the 1960s, in order to be allowed to become a citizen of the United States, you had to be considered white. Um, that law has been changed, but we all know that there's a quota system and that refugees from, and that immigrants and refugees from some places are more welcome than they are from other places. The issue here may not be race specific. But it's certainly about our own prejudices towards people labeled uh, Syrian or Muslim, etc. That's the issue here. Um, and our country, <laughs> our country has not um, been as welcoming to those groups. If you look at the photos, etc., that are set for the events uh, that have been in this country, our country has not been. Another statement, and so it's important to say that this community stands as a wealthy community. So it's not something that is just assumed. The second point I'd like to make is uh, another statement that, that the man made beforehand about the economic burden of welcoming immigrants into this community. It is an economic fact that this cohort of immigrants in particular. But in general, refugee groups tend to build global economies, not to decimate them. It's a mistake for you all to think that these refugees would be a drain on our economy. They are largely educated, but irrespective of level of class or education, they are coming here to rebuild their lives. 
that in and of itself produces an economic engine. So um, I just would like for you to at least stick to the reality of the situation and not go into fantasy or fear because we really need to think about what we're standing against when we oppose uh, this group of immigrants. Um, you know, 19th century, if we were to stand against the Irish, um, I dare say uh, uh, several members of the council would not be here today. Uh, if we decided to stand against Greek immigrants uh, in the 20th century, I dare say some council members would not be here today. Um, we did stand against Jewish immigrants, um, and I know that there are people who are not here today because of that. Don't make these mistakes, don't be foolish. Open your hearts, open your minds, and just pass this resolution. Thank you. Danny Clance, uh, 7 Edward Street. Give me your title. Give me your poor. Give me your masses. Your name to be free. Have we drawn, uh, have our hearts become a to these words? The words that stand for New York, especially. When we think of these words, what do we think of the statue of liberty? With their arm holding in line as a light for people to see. All we're asking is that we are, that our city council, the heart of Babington, so that yes, we will be that light. We will be that light for people who are coming and seeking help. Thank you. My name is John Sparkler, S-H-A-S-S-H-A-R-P-E-R, and I live on the north side of Binghamton. Um, often I think about what the city council of Binghamton does for me, my daily life, or how it shapes the way I live. And sometimes it's hard to think about what that actually, what that actually means. It's like, do, do you fix the streets on that I live on? Because my street ain't been fixed. Anyway, so one thing that the reason I would bring that up is because several speakers before me have said that this issue isn't something that's played out here in city council here, that we that we don't live in a democracy where the discussion that citizens take and speak to uh, people in positions of power like you don't don't matter that we should wait for someone else to do to have these discussions and think about these things and decide what's right and wrong. And I frankly think that that's wrong. That we should wait for people that are bigger, stronger, more powerful, and just not us do what they did and decide for us. I, I think that's wrong. So just coming here and seeing, hearing the stories that people have said, I've decided that at least I would try to find ways to make Binghamton more welcoming to refugees, present and future. And there's organizations like the ACA, and I'm sure there's others that are also doing that work. And I will go make a personal commitment to do that as well. It would be very nice if the city of Binghamton would do something, even if it's a small, small thing that represents its citizens and takes seriously and respects the discussions and decisions that people come and bring Pretty fun to today. Thank you very much. City Council, good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Black. I live at uh, 7th Edward Street, the Mason District. Uh, I had no intentions on speaking tonight, but after hearing some of the comments, I couldn't help but throw it into the mix here. Uh, one of the gentlemen had said previously um, in regards to the uh, refugee crisis in Syria uh, that there is not proper screening happening and that's going to allow terrorists to come to our country. Um, as this hasn't been touched upon yet, um, I figured it would be up to me to uh, remind everybody that the uh, refugee process for America is one of the most rigid programs for people of, of non American. Uh, set to get into our country. Uh, people who are coming in on visas and other work-related um, documents have much less security 
processes to go through that our, our, our refugees do. Um, refugees can take up to two years to process. Uh, they are screened by the FBI, the CIA, and now um, uh, Homeland Security, um, as well as other uh, agencies within the government. So to think that um, any Syrian refugee who comes here is just going to uh, blow us up is kind of absurd. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, also, um, uh, just to touch upon what Dara had said, um, our, our nation and our, our community have not always been the most uh, 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 appreciative of our, of our, of our immigrants. Um, our town here, uh, I mean, even a few decades ago, was someone with the KKK. Uh, the, the official uh, New York City chapter. So, uh, I mean, just the bigotry in our city alone is, is enough to warrant such a resolution to come to our city. Um, I believe our city council has the job of representing all of us, of protecting all of our interests, and I believe that the safety of our citizens are one of those interests as well. Uh, the Muslim community has been saying for a while now that since the Paris attacks, that the anti-Islamic and Muslim sentiment in our country, as well as our city, has surpassed that amount. Which means that on a day-to-day -day basis, we have citizens not only in our country, but in our city as well, being harassed, uh, threatened, uh, death threats, and, and what have you, for simply their religion. Uh, I think that that's absurd, and I think that the city council will not take um, time to pass a resolution acknowledging that they have every right to be here as well as us, then I'm not sure what we're doing. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Eve Berman. I don't know if you can hear me because I don't speak loudly. Um, I've been a 30 year resident of Broome County, 20 years of that has been in the city of Hamilton. And uh, the reason I wanted to speak is I know firsthand, I'm the child of refugees. My mother came from Germany in 1938. Most of my family were refugees, and they scattered them and had to be various places before they were allowed in this country. And they were considered enemy combatants, and they were just as distrusted as the Syrians are today. However, I know firsthand with the what how grateful and how patriotic and how hardworking my brother and family came here. And I see the same thing happening here with the Syrians. There have been there's a lot of screening going on, and there have been absolutely no instances today of any refugees that have gone through two years of um, screening causing any problems. They will be the best citizens. That this, that this council will see, and they will contribute to our economy. We need citizens here that are motivated and hardworking and really appreciate what it's like and the gifts of America. And I just want to thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chong Wong Kami, and I'm from Florida, and I'm speaking about how we're working as an immigrant. And I'm from Kyrgyzstan, and I would say that uh, being not the consular process from the beginning, I would say it's much easier to become here not as a refugee, but as a national, or a tourist, or student visa, or a relative of a United States citizen. Uh, we have a lot of fiancé visas where the government only requires a gender of background and see each other one time. So I think if we're talking about people who not take senior refugees, we're talking about let's just close our society and not about the citizens from other countries. And the, the United States uh, is, a, is a member and, and we signed the uh, United Nations Convention on Refugees and it's happened after the Second World War because the Second World War showed that if we try to isolate our societies, it will happen is that the Americans fought in, in 1939 to turn around the ship with, uh, with Jewish children and they turned it back to Germany and, 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 and they died in the concentration camps. So if you say yes, we are, we may be afraid of sinners, but we will not be afraid of everybody who come here and then we, we end up in a situation like the, the dying bodies are going up and trying to find people from other bodies because genetically and economically they try out as a society. 
and also are aware about the, about the public good and the messages to the public good on the on the economics is not true because uh, they have this experience, they have these skills, and even if they are on the public system in, in, initially, they cannot stay on the public system because everybody who is resourceful, everybody who, who likes to do what they have to do, they all uh, establish their lives, and uh, maybe not the first generation, but the second generation, and everybody brings uh, the uh, good things to the society, and even from the first generation, I must, must remember the, that my original father, the Steve Jobs, was a, was a senior student, and he was in political science, and, uh, and I think we should think that uh, we, uh, we should think about our future, like, if you say we're afraid of Syrian refugees or another, another refugees, why are we not afraid of Ukrainian refugees? We have a lot of Ukrainian refugees coming and they're coming from the Kosovo. And we, 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 we don't talk about, about it because they're not Muslims. So to talk about our lives, it's, 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 it's exactly the same people. And a lot of people come from Europe without visa. They just reach so why do we not talk about it? Thank you. My name is Goretz Lugano. I work for the American Civil Association. I have set the refugees in our communities. I have heard tears from the refugee hearts. I have heard horrible stories that we want to do. Uh, you know, the stories they tell you are not breaking. They have been in camps. They share one bread among six or seven people. Uh, the checking, they go through a lot of checking. So when somebody says, oh, if it wasn't for what happened last month, I would do this for, for this refugee. The refugees, I mean, the people who committed like crimes in California who are born here. They are not born from outside of this, of this country. They are born in the, in the U.S. Refugees come with just a bar or a few things. And uh, having, 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 having been in camps, starving, with maybe one, one breast changing or no underwear, nothing. And they come and work hard, they work in factories, they work whatever job they can find, they work on those, those jobs. So please, be sympathetic, be welcoming, we are all refugees. Uh, if uh, we close our doors, and don't allow them, you don't allow them in the US. Uh, in, deep down in your heart, some of your grandparents, some of your parents were refugees to go immigrants. They are all looking for peace, they are looking for green pastors. So open your hearts and let the refugees come. Thank you.
and not what they give to the president. So, that's my Okay. Um, so, my family immigrated here in the 1980s. I'm um, a Pakistani heritage and I'm a Muslim woman. I think it's been great having all these um, personal narratives, um, not personal narratives of people of color and people that are not Muslim, um, but as a Muslim woman, not an Arab woman, but a Muslim woman. Um, I just I guess I can speak a little bit to how it feels for me seeing the climate of America now. Like my dad came to America in the 1970s, so things were very different than the world, the political climate in this country was very different. And there was much more acceptance for Muslim people and a lot less fear. Um, and 9 11 changed everything. And I think, like, as growing up in this area, I personally think I was pretty fortunate in terms of not having any crimes directed toward me. But it is really heartbreaking to read about other parts of our country where a lot of that stuff is happening. And I know our mosque um, here in Johnson City um, has been mostly safe throughout a lot of this medical issues here and there. But I think a lot of that has to do with this climate and things and that I really hope and believe um, supports immigrants and makes us feel safe. And I know personally, like, I've always actually felt to be safe here. And it would really be a big tragedy to see that change, um, and I think a resolution like this would just be such a wonderful statement toward other um, Muslims like me who really, um, who really appreciate this aspect of the news and don't want to lose that. And I think that for me is, is something that I worry about and I hope and really hope that you guys take that into consideration. Please. Session. What I felt could have been 
set of hours of collaboration spent on behalf of improving the quality of life for members of this community were lost in promotion. I would like to clear some confusion for you, City Council representatives, as well as everyone in this room. Voting for this resolution does not mean to support U.S. involvement in Syria. It does not mean to support the President or his decisions. It does not mean that you do not have concerns about the federal vetting process. And it certainly doesn't mean that you're going against your party. Also, I, this is not anywhere I prepared, but it also, the resolution that's before you has been prepared by volunteers and staff at the American Civic Association. Members of City Council reached out to us in support, but voting for this resolution does not mean that any certain members have won, and I feel like this resolution has become very affiliated with certain members of City Council, and what we appreciate their support. This is a larger scale, and I think it doesn't have anything personal to do with City Council members, the mayor, personal confrontations that you all may have. Um, oh, uh, and lastly, yeah, I'm a, a graduate student, as I said, I just purchased a home, and I, I just wanted to know that I, I chose to stay here in Binghamton and go to graduate school because I keep hearing this recurrent message from the city of Binghamton that you want young professionals in the area. You want us to stay and stop the big thing. You want us to invest in the community. I don't want to invest in a community that would not pass a gesture that could help feel more comfortable and more safe. Regardless of if you have friends from different nationality, I don't want anybody in this community to feel unsafe. And, uh, and I really want to be a part of that. And so I just urge you to, to please consider what the statement is, what the message that you're going to send and who you're going to send it to. Because you're either going to tell people that you will tolerate those statements, and, or you're going to tell them that you won't stand it. There's a zero tolerance policy on discrimination and hate crimes and hatred in your and uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Excuse me. My name is Gianna Omar. I am the woman that I'm um, going to need just reference. Um, I'm here to ask what the city council is willing to do to ensure me that I am still welcome and accepted in my own community. Thank you. Choice. But we 
refugees are not coming because they're opting to leave somewhere. They're fleeing horrible circumstances. And we have been taught in all of our traditions to care for those who are oppressed, to remember that we've all been strangers in a new place, in a different place, and so to be sensitive to the stranger and to put me that hand out to them and to offer the support that we can. The words that have been proposed for the city council to vote on this evening would offer that in a way to give that much more comfort to people coming here, for whatever they may be coming. Other cities have taken this action, and it is an action of warmth and caring, and I can't think of a better time of year to do that. Thank you. My name is Ali Taza. I live in Binghamton for the past one year, but I've been in the community for the last 17 years. First of all, I hope uh, and you know I pray that no incident happen either here or anywhere, either because of Muslims or non-Muslims here where just the blood is shed for no reason, just for political reasons or whatever the reason is. So that's what I want to say, you know, because I must forget I'm giving some statistics which shouldn't show that you know, uh, I'm showing that terrorism is small, so you can accept like that. You know, 32,719 people died in traffic crashes in 2014. So because of that, when we say, you know, we get rid of cars or, you know, trucks, or we make rules and regulations, you know, and we do the safety check and everything. Compared to that, the other statistics from 2001 to 2013, 406,496 people died on the US side because of firearms. So that is 31,537 people die every year in US alone because of gun violence. For that we can say, you know, how many people are talking, seeing these statistics, you know, are concerned about, you know, gun control. You know. But, and the other statistics which I have is, as a result of terrorism from 2001 to 2013, outside US, the US citizens killed were 350. Whereas terrorism incidents inside the US during that same 12 year period when 3030 people killed in domestic acts of terrorism. I did get the figures, you know, how many of these were from Muslims. But you know, seeing all the Muslim by not Muslim, but by terrorism, we nobody labels them as you know white men as threat to society. So same way we shouldn't think, you know, uh, there is already a process, you know, where the refugees are vetted, they go a two-year process, you know, what everything, you all know, this is just a fear mongering. I feel ashamed the best country in the world, the best people in the world have been fooled by the media and the politicians that we have become so scared, you know. So, that's what my thing is. Uh, the other thing which I want to say is we plan, but we plan accordingly and God also plans and you know, we don't know what it is, but God has given us, you know, mind to act rationally. And as it was told, Steve Jobs was son of a Syrian uh, refugee. His father's name is Abdul Fattah Jandar. And his father uh, fled Syria because of the same political unrest and came to the US as immigrant. So, just because you know you see all that in the media, I don't think we should you know uh, close our doors to the refugees. Thank you. Um, 
First off, I would like to thank the American Civic Association for writing and supporting this resolution. They know tragedy firsthand, and yet they do not have fear in their heart. If you remember me from last time, I spoke off the script about my heritage. I was Syrian. My father immigrated to this country from Damascus with $200 in his pockets when his father had passed away to help support his family. I was there when my father passed the citizenship test, and that was one of the happiest days of my life. My family are the scary monsters the media has taught you to be afraid of. Currently, my family on my father's side were living in the capital, Damascus, before they had to flee to Lebanon. They did not run away because they wanted to leave. They ran away because they were afraid. This issue is a, is a faraway issue to a lot of people in the world. I would be surprised if people in this room even know anything about Syrian culture. But this issue affects me personally. I don't want my family to die. I don't want to call my younger cousins and tell them, no, sorry, America believes you are a terrorist and will prefer you to have the hands of ISIS. I want to be able to say that we stood up in the face of fear and changed the world. I just want to share some facts about terrorism that some people may not know. According to the 2011 National Counterterrorism Center report, Americans are more likely to be killed from a myriad of random objects and activities before they should ever have to worry about being targeted and killed in a terrorist attack. To put it in perspective, more people are crushed to death by their televisions or furniture each year than they are targeted or harmed by a terrorist. The police in your own city pose more of a threat to your liberty than any terrorist ever would. According to the 2011 data, the chances of you being attacked by a terrorism are roughly 1 in 20 million. Compared to the likelihood of you drowning in your bathtub, which is 1 in 800,000, losing your life in a car crash, which is 1 in 19,000, dying in a building fire, 1 in 99,000, or being struck by lightning, 1 in 5 million. We should be honestly more concerned about heart disease, strokes, cancer, before we worry about any terrorist threat. It should also be noted that terrorist incidents have only increased in prevalence since the inception of war on terror back in 2001. Clearly, the ongoing warfare is only contributing to more of the same problem, and that warfare isn't justified, but we should more rightly be afraid of things like tornadoes, earthquakes, floods, dog bites, excessive pain, and bicycle accidents. Despite the reality that terror does, does not pose any imminent threat to most citizen, citizens. World leaders are determined anyway to strip away our civil liberties in the effort to steadily go after the terror. And they continue with this even though there is no clear idea in mind of what a victory would even look like. The war on terror has demonstrated that the war isn't just about terrorism. I just want to reiterate this small council of seven cannot change legal precedent. This resolution is just a notion of love for not only this community, but for me and my family. Pass the resolution. Thank you. My name is Dorian Zappa, and I live uh, in Seven Vincent Street. Uh, everybody who's previously spoken has spoken, rightfully so, about diversity, love, and compassion. And I suspect that, in the opinion of some of you, that those topics miss the point. I feel it's possible that you might miss the point, and that it is possible that, in the end, you might need to spin this resolution into something that it is not. President Burr, I was at the December 7th work session when the American Civic Association proposed a simple, clear, humanitarian resolution that aimed to affirm that Binghamton remained what it always has been, that being a welcoming city to refugees past and future. It seemed like a clear resolution that merely aimed to respond to national dialogue on a local level, proposed by an agency that aids and supports refugees. But your response to them was that you would have supported this resolution six months ago, and that you might be willing to support it if it was brought to you in another six months, but that you could not support the resolution now. What is your true north? The sentiment behind this resolution is urgent now 
Because the vitriol of national discourse is happening now. And it wants us to do exactly what you did. National discourse wants us to confuse compassion with national security. And to question the safety of certain ethnic groups among us. The discourse wants us to paint Muslims, betting, compassion, refugees, ISIS, safety, homeland security, local symbolic resolutions, and national policy all in the same brushstroke. The national discourse wants us to look at a well thought out resolution about compassion and conviction and take a mental leap to security risks and serious. That is what the national discourse wants us to do, and that is what you do, Mr. Burke. And that is the logic that stands to see this resolution go down if you allow it to. Politicizing humanitarian compassion is reprehensible. The resolution embodies the mission of the American Civic Association. They exist to relocate and support refugees. They are respected and since 2009's mass shooting are revered presence in our, in our community. Binghamton has a history of being a refugee resettlement area. Mr. Berg, in this particular case, did you mean to say that the very mission of the American Civic Association was fully embraced by you six months ago? Might be embraced by you again in another six months, but cannot be embraced right now? I want to be able to say that my city rose above the national rhetoric and passed a simple affirmation of compassion. It's that simple. It has become complicated because it has been made complicated. It is not complicated. As one clergy member was quoted as saying, it's a no-brainer. Mr. Berg, what is your true north? And what are the convictions that you hold that guide you? This resolution wants to affirm that Binghamton remains what it always was, welcoming to refugees. I urge you to please lead counsel there tonight. Thank you. My name is Ed Hickey, H I C K E Y. I live on the west side of Bennington. And I think that we're all, as we're kind of missing the point here, citizens of Binghamton should not have put you guys in a position to vote on this. I mean, my father always tells me if you live long enough, you become everything you detested in this world. And the fact that a group of people protesting a vote or, or supporting a group of people are now doing it in front of seven people getting ready to cast a symbolic vote that really carries no weight at all. We lost it. We should be out in the streets waving our hands and pumping our fists in the air and supporting these refugees. We were all refugees. Look at the names of this table. None of them were born in America. And if you want to know about the terrorism that's happening here in America, I remember one or two of the Native Americans, but all of us were terrorists, all of us were mass shootings took place at the hands of immigrants and refugees or the children of grandchildren. So when my family came here, I don't know if there were people reaching their arms out to help them on their way into I don't know how it's happened or wherever they came in. But I know that we need to show more support for the people who need to come to this country. We also need to keep you guys from getting on the boat and our symbolic vote about pretty much something you have no control over. The protests and the support groups should be out on the streets, raising their hands and pumping their fists, not coming in here asking for some symbolic support from seven people whose vote really means no more than my vote or anyone else in this room. So I apologize for putting in this position. Because it's a bad position. There's, there's no way to. Everybody is supporting the refugees. The question is, the, the vote itself, it's, it's, it's not something that should need to happen. You know, the newspaper should be covering that each congregation in town got their, their congregation to go out and march from the ACA to the federal building or something. We should be showing the numbers, not having six people try to represent us as a people because you can't. You're just six people. Or seven people, especially in this particular instance. Uh, I, I don't know how it came to this, where we sheepishly asked you guys to speak on our behalf instead of getting out there and yelling and screaming and forcing people to notice that we need to be heard. But I apologize for that. Thanks. That's a
received on uh, December 17, 2015 in support of equal pay for equal work for Binghamton University teaching assistants. An email. Use your, use your mic. Uh, an email from Marion Stern received, uh, received on December 18, 2015 in support of refugees. An email from Rabbi Barbara Goldman Rortel received on December 21st, 2015 in support of refugees. A petition with 39 signatures received on December 21, 2015 in support of refugees. A letter from Patrick Clark received on December 21, 2015 in support of refugees. A letter from Dr. Reverend Joseph Selpak received on December 21, 2015 in support of refugees. A letter from the YWCA received on December 21, 2015 in support of refugees. A letter from Ruth Blizzard received on December 21, 2015, in support of refugees. A letter from Thomas Garuto in received on December 22, 2015, in support of refugees. A letter from John Vallone received on December 22, 2015, in oppositions of refugees. A, uh, a petition with uh, 168 signatures received on December 22, 2015 from the American Civic Association in support of refugees. Um, introductory resolution 15-126, a resolution in support of refugees. It was introduced by Municipal and Public Affairs, sponsored by Council Members Renia, Webb, and Masavage, and is dated December 9th, 2015. Council Renia. Thank you. I rise and ask unanimous consideration for Introductory Resolution 15-126. Second. This is a resolution in support of refugees, and I'm going to read it. Whereas the Refugee Act of 1980 declared that it is the historic policy of the United States to respond to the urgent needs of persons subject to persecution in their homelands, and gave the President the power to handle any unforeseen emergency refugee situations, such as the one involving grave humanitarian concerns. And whereas the people of Binghamton have a long history of opening their community and welcoming refugees. And whereas Binghamton, New York is proud to be an ethnically diverse city with 9.4% of its residents born outside the United States, indicating that Binghamton is truly a city of immigrants. And whereas Binghamton is proud of its immigrant communities, including Vietnamese, Laotian, Kurdish, Bosnian, Somali, Sudanese, Burmese, Cuban, and other communities, 
made up of all religions, and many of whom arrived, arrived here under the status of refugee. And whereas on average 45 to 60 refugees are resettled into the Binghamton area each year since 2009. And whereas the American Civic Association has resettled thousands of refugees since their establishment in 1939. Whereas the number of refugees fleeing the conflict in Syria to neighboring countries has now eclipsed 4 million, thus confirming the Syrian refugee crisis as the world's single largest refugee crisis in almost a quarter of a century, which Binghamton should not ignore and should stand ready to respond to this humanitarian crisis. And whereas refugees to the United States are subject to the highest level of security checks of any category of traveler to our country. And whereas refugees are vetted by the National Counterterrorism Center, the FBI's Terrorist Screening Center, and the Departments of State, Defense, and Homeland Security. And whereas refugees are subject to additional screening that verifies what caused them to flee their homes. Whereas the intense background and medical checks required of refugees can take as much as two years to complete. Whereas more than half of the refugees brought to the United States have been children. Whereas a public statement that Binghamton is a welcoming community implicitly and clearly conveys that Binghamton will self-identify as a compassionate city. And whereas Binghamton, as part of the world community, can and should play a role, however small, in the collective response to fear-mongering and human suffering. Be it resolved that we, the members of the Binghamton City Council, a body of elected officials, that represent the people from a multitude of ethnicities and religions, reaffirm our commitment to remain a place of support for the refugees who have, in past years, made Binghamton their home. Be it further resolved that Binghamton City Council, a body of elected officials that represent people from a multitude of ethnicities and religions, affirm and express a commitment to be a welcoming community to any and all future refugees who have gained sanctioned entrance to the United States of America. This resolution, uh, I think as many of the speakers alluded to tonight, is about Binghamton. This resolution is not about the FBI, it's not about the federal government, it's not even really about whether any refugees, Syrian or otherwise, are going to come to our country anywhere. This resolution is about we, as the representatives of the city of, as the representatives of the resident of the city of Binghamton, to make a statement that says that we are a compassionate and welcoming community, which we've always been. I mean, we've heard speakers talk about that tonight. You know how they came here and they, it's one of the things that they've always loved about the community. But several months ago, we started this policy of, we would read off how many letters came in support of or in opposition to different things, and we wouldn't read the entire letters into the record. And I understand it's about expediency, and at the time we were getting a lot of letters that said exactly the same thing, but um, well, I read off the list of letters, but you know what? I wanted to read just a little bit from a couple of the letters. I have a letter here that Lai talked about from Patrick Clark, and I'm just gonna read part of it. I have chosen to live, work, and raise my family in this community in part because I believe our ethnic diversity is one of our greatest strengths. I taught social studies at Binghamton High School for eight years. During that time, I had the opportunity to work with students of many ethnicities and creeds. I can honestly say that this rich collection of cultures enlivened our discussions, challenged students' preconceptions, and moved them toward a more nuanced, empathetic, and tolerant understanding of our world. Today, most Binghamtonians probably celebrate our region's ethnic heritage, but it is also important to note our city's long and conflicted relationship to immigration. Stories about immigrants who arrive knowing little more English than the phrase, which way, BJ, constitute an important part of our collective memory. Yet many in this city vehemently resisted immigration in the early 20th century. For the residents who helped make Binghamton a northern stronghold of the Ku Klux Klan, these primarily Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, and Jewish immigrants seemed just a little too foreign. Moreover, during World War I and the first Red Scare, many in our city used the, viewed these folks as a security threat. Those fears proved unfounded. I recognize that we live in frightening times, but our city has faced such times before. Um, this is uh, uh, from Reverend Selipat. As I reflect on my own family's story in the United States, I am keenly aware that the reason my family is in the United States is because of the U.S. policy that welcomed Eastern European immigrants and refugees. 
I'm a third generation American and my great grandparents immigrated to this country fleeing injustices experienced at the hands of the Tsarist Russia and Austria-Hungary Hungarian Empire. They were destitute and war torn, but were welcomed by the words on our Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. They capitalized on that welcome and became citizens of this great country. There, all of these letters that we received, they all have great sentiments in them. And we could, you know, we could could have been here all night if we read them all into the record. But I think it's really important that we consider this resolution. I'm really urging my colleagues to please consider everything that this is about. I want to thank everyone from the ACA and everyone else who has worked so hard to bring this forward. I also want to apologize because the fact that this got so politicized, the fact that it, it uh, turned into what it turned into is unforgivable. This was a gesture of dem to demonstrate what we Binghamtonians are really all about. This was meant to be a gesture to let the world know that the city of Binghamton is welcoming and compassionate. And it is truly, truly unfortunate that it wound up where it did. I will also say this. I feel that this is so important. I felt it was really important when we first brought it to just send the message that we're a welcoming community. But any one of you who's looked at any of the media blogs on any of the articles that have been done, any one of you who sat here and listened to those statements be read, who doesn't want to send a firm and solid message that that is not what Bennington is about, that is not what our city is about, any one of you who doesn't want to vehemently deny that that's what Binghamton is, you really, really need to examine your motives for, for the way you're going to vote tonight. This isn't about the administration. This isn't about me or Councilwoman Webb. This is about them. This is about the folks who put the effort into it, and this is about sending a message to the greater world. Yesterday, there was a group of faith leaders who met at Confluence Park and, and had a, had a press, press conference condemning religious discrimination. And I'm one, I, you know, I'm one of the people I'm normally very careful about not mixing those things, but I do want to say, in my faith tradition, the leader of my faith tradition has called on us to celebrate the 100th Jubilee as a year of mercy. Our faith leader, has called on us to be merciful and welcoming. I'm calling on my colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Well, it's not going to be a surprise. I'm going to uh, <laughs> say just a couple of things. I want to First, again, thank everyone who's come tonight and spoken on not just this uh, particular resolution that's on the table, but for all the issues we're going to be talking about tonight. I just wanted to I just clarify a, a few things. Um, one, uh, this the idea of the role of city council on issues that are perceived to only um, are outside of our jurisdiction. And uh, in terms of our level of governance, and I, I just want to reemphasize that Part of our responsibility as public leaders is to uh, inform, but also address issues that are happening in the public way. Because as leaders, we have access to information, resources, research, that part of that responsibility requires us to discern fact from fiction. And, and I feel like at times that whenever we have to discuss or dialogue around contentious issues that the comfort zone for leadership is to kind of step back and say, well, that's out of my jurisdiction, so I can't really comment on it, when in fact, the public, whether you're talking about the public in the local community or outside of Binghamton, looks at elected officials as leadership to provide insight on issues that impact their lives, whether they're aware of it or not. So I wanted to point that out. Also, this, the notion about resolutions and, in particular, non-binding resolutions. As everyone has heard the saying, you know, all politics and issues are local. And I, I do want to point out that 
we have and can point to many examples in our collective history as a country and in this community policies and provisions that started at the national level but absolutely trickled down to us here at the local level and at the same time these resolutions that we do offer can also create a, a voice on issues that permeate at the local level and they can also ascend to the national level. So I felt it was important to talk about why we even discuss non-binding resolutions because it creates an opportunity and a platform for important dialogue that can influence and impact policies that impact our daily lives. The other thing I wanted to talk about was one of the speakers mentioned the issues that we're also grappling with in this community that uh, I have most certainly have uh, brought to this body and outside of council chambers and also several colleagues around the table, issues around the pervasiveness of poverty and unemployment in our community. You're absolutely right that these are issues and we have time and time again have um, raised awareness and have continued to do so up until this present time but also have sought out opportunities to address those important issues that impact all of us. Um, the last thing I wanted to just mention, the resolution that's on the table tonight, the provisions and the language that's included in the resolution in regards to the concerns that have been raised about security, national security, the process that is in place, highlights the fact that, again, there are issues, and I will say that uh, in the research that we've done and the dialogue that we've been a part of, it is not this kind of anyone that wants to come in, they can just come. There are very stringent policies, uh, regulations. Is everything foolproof? Absolutely not. But there are provisions in place, and the language that was included in this resolution speaks to some of those issues and concerns around national security. I know there was another point we made, raised in regards to the language in the resolution implies that because the opening language is welcoming and we're saying, well, inadvertently we're saying that we're not being welcoming. And I will say, I have to respectfully disagree. There are times, and especially the current climate that we're in, where you're seeing, and one of the speakers talked about it, a significant increase in hate crimes, discrimination, based off of unfounded fears, unfortunately, that disproportionately impact certain members of our community, both locally and uh, abroad. And the reason why the resolution was framed in this way is to reaffirm our commitment to being a welcoming and inclusive community. So I wanna also um, just mention to my colleagues that, you know, we spend a lot of our time in our, these meetings and in community meetings talking about we want everyone to come to council. We want you to be involved in the issues that impact our city. We want to bring everyone, we want to be inclusive. Yet at the same time, I'm hearing things that contradict that. It's like the other, we, we want some people, but not others. And I don't think that's anyone around this table. I don't think that's your intention. And I most certainly believe that the folks who are here in this council chamber and outside of here don't believe that our intentions as leaders in this community, as elected leaders in this community, are intentionally trying to exclude others in our dialogue in regards to issues around human rights, just as an example. And so the intention with this legislation, as Councilman Reddy has simply pointed out, is just twofold. One, it just reaffirms our commitment to ensure that everyone in our community, whether you are a refugee or an immigrant, is welcome and that all residents should have an opportunity for a better life. And it also supports the efforts and the good work that the American Civic Association and other agencies in our community are doing on a day-to-day -day basis to support refugees and immigrants that are in our community. So again, I hope um, the points I made in regards to the intention uh, with the resolution, I hope my colleagues will consider supporting this. Thank you. Malco or Magistrate or Matsavich, either one. I just want to let you know when this first was presented to us, I didn't put my name on it. Because I, mean, I, do, I do that a lot of times. But I go in open minded. I, I, I wanted to do some research. 
I've done the research. I know the ACA has made some changes to this resolution. And the more you read it, then you look here that the refugees undergo the strictest, uh, the strictest background checks of any group of people entering the U.S. And people are worrying about Syrian refugees. It says Syrian refugees applicants undergo an additional screening for the, by the Department of Homeland Security, the only refugee group to do so. And this isn't about and refugees coming to Binghamton. It's all about welcoming refugees. We have no control who's going to let the refugees come. That's not, that's not our to decide. But we just got to welcome the people. But all the immigrants that are in this area, we have to be a welcome city. I'm going to totally support this resolution. Councilman, oh, Thank Councilman Pat Fitzgerald. Go ahead, sure. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming down tonight, staying for the duration of this meeting, because it's certainly in the long run. Uh, the ACA, throughout its whole history, has helped many, many immigrants and refugees. My family uh, shares a quick story. We came over in the mid 50s as a family. Uh, ACA made it possible. The rules were a little different back then. We needed a sponsor, which was my, uh, my aunt, a uh, place to stay. My dad needed a job. And uh, whatever money that the ACA put forward to help uh, with the expenses on the uh, spiritual and physical before we left. And uh, <laughs> in uh, 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 spiritual and physical before we left, and again, the vaccination and all that. So, I mean, it was. It was a, uh, uh, a real process back then. But the proudest days of my uh, life were to see my mom and dad get their citizenship and to get my own citizenship when I turned 19 years old. Uh, and that's what being an American is all about. Throughout the age, throughout the whole history, dating back to the 40s, we had the Irish, we had the Italians, we had the Jews, the every nationality that came from Europe. They were discriminated against at one point or another. You can, you know, you'll hear from them that they couldn't get jobs in, uh, in certain parts, uh, certain uh, businesses in the city. And then later on, as the demographics change, less uh, immigrants from Europe, we're getting immigrants from the Middle East, from Bosnia after the Bosnian War, Africa, I mean, Latin America. It's just, we are a land of immigrants. And we've always been a welcoming community. And we always will be, because that's what this area is. That's what we are. And the fact that we need a resolution at this point, when we thought, when we've had immigrants coming here since 1939, so, and from Vietnam, from Laos, from Burma, from every, every third world country, from Africa, uh, it's just that at this point, We've never needed a resolution before saying that we were a welcome community because we've always been that. But now we want to say we need this piece of paper to affirm that we're a welcoming community. And I don't believe that. We are a welcoming community. All right. Council President Bird. Oh. oh. Thank you. Uh, three weeks ago, Councilman Rennie had called me and uh, asked me to put on the agenda. From the get-go, I told her I had no reservations about that. And as one of the speakers indicated, since 9-11, things have definitely changed. And it has not changed for the better. I received three letters, one in our city council mailbox that all city council members received, and two at home, and I'll just paraphrase the letter because it definitely reflects my own personal opinion. As a lifetime <coughs> resident of Binghamton, I am vitally concerned with the continued degradation of our city and our local economy. In this respect, my concerns focus on recent city council activities to formulate and pass a compassionate and welcoming resolution opening door for refuge immigration 
the relocation to Binghamton. While humanitarian appeal for approval, the resolution appears acceptable on the surface. There are too many negative factors which indicate the impracticality of allowing emotions to outweigh common sense. Council members have expressed their concerns for the safety of our community, and that concern I echo. While the, safe, while the security factor is a real-time vital concern, you must look beyond the security issue to recognize and acknowledge the long-term cost impacts of ref refugee relocation to our already overstressed local economy. When I did receive that, I went on the New York State Department of Labor website and found up through November of 2015, 3,400 jobs in the Southern Tier have been lost. Our unemployment rate within the city borders at the 6%. Now, one of the speakers so indicated, and I have no proof one way or the other, that immigration bolsters our economy. But when I see statistics that tell us that we have lost that many jobs, I think first and foremost of the people here, our citizens, who are without work and who needs those jobs. When the attack on Paris happened, which was followed up by some couple smaller incidents, and then out in California. I think we're all, we're astounded that was happening. And it covered the news media for, and it still does, for three weeks. But what made me make the statement that I was quoted for, if it happened six months ago before all this, I would have had no problem. But when the director of Homeland Security two weeks ago came on CNN News and indicated that our vetting process is flawed, that he predicts that terrorists will infiltrate the immigrants attempting to come into the country, that worries me. I made the statement the other night that until the federal government comes up with the financial support, the physical support of hiring more people for the vetting process. I'm not in favor of going on record at this time. Things need to be tightened up. Just like after 9-11, we saw the influx of TSA security at all our airports. Now we need, because we have over 200,000 immigrants wanting to come into our country, we don't have the resources at this time to properly vet them, to screen them. And that's why I will not support it at this time. And at the end of the meeting, there's some things predicated on how the votes go that I will share that was brought up at our work session. Thank you. Councilman Mahalka. Thank you, President Burr. I'd like to thank everyone that came down and shared their points, uh, some very valuable points. Uh, I think Binghamton has been a, a very welcoming area. I think he has some bad issues through history now and then, but I think for the most part, it's been a welcoming community. I think it still is. We've taken people in during famines, during depression, during conflicts, during wars. I, I don't see a problem with people from Syria coming in. Uh, again, we don't have any control in the screening process, whatever goes on with the State Department, the Defense Department, or Homeland Security. I think the ACA does a tremendous job. Uh, they help people find shelter here, get them food when they first get here, uh, get them into apartments. Uh, maybe even help them get homes, I'm not sure. Uh, what surprised me was three, uh, 13 days ago, uh, when we had our last business meeting, it was about six people that came and spoke. And before the vote even came up, everybody failed. Nobody stayed around for the vote. And then when it came time for the vote, the vote was held over. It surprised me even more. 
Another thing that surprises me is why wasn't it brought up sooner? We talk about bringing things up as soon as possible so we can discuss it, talk about it. Religious leaders from all around the world, from all different religions, two years ago were talking about this. It wasn't brought up. We talked about Bosnians, probably one of the largest growing communities here in the city. They're getting into apartments, they're getting jobs, they're getting homes, they're good workers. They never got a resolution. We talked about the Ukrainians, the Russians. The last 20 years, that population has grown here in the city of Edmonton. They never got a resolution. We go back to the late 70s. We look at the Laotian population, the Vietnamese population. Good workers, they've come in through the same way. They've come in through churches, they've come through the ACA, they found shelter, they got their food, they're in apartments, they own homes, they're good workers. But they didn't get a resolution either. Um, I, I just kind of find it hard that we have this document for just the Syrian people. And, and the, way it's, the, way it's, the way it's written, it's that way. That's the way it's presented, and that's the way I interpret it. And I, I just don't see why we have to do it this way. Thank you. Council Manson. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Also, I mean, it's been a long meeting so far. Matzo, it's Russian. My parents came from Russia. My grandparents came from Russia. But my mother's side, my grandmother's side, so, talk about ethnicity. We've got two different, totally backgrounds. Again, I want to reiterate on Councilman Alpo a little bit too. I have the Kurdish people living in my district. In Saratoga, there's approximately 100 of them. You want to talk about hard work? I have no problems with refugees coming. We did not give them a resolution, did we? And they are hard workers. They support us. Everything they go out and they make sure that their, their community in Saratoga is safe. And they don't look you right. I'm having a hard time with this right at this moment. I'd really like to see this table, if we could, and go to the committee and talk about this a little more. I really would before this goes on. If we need to vote on this tonight. I can't support it. I'm sorry. Just a point of order. Yes. Just, um, thank you, President Bird. Just as a point of order, I would like to direct my colleagues to the fourth whereas in this resolution. Because um, I think it's important for everyone to understand that whereas Binghamton is proud of its immigrant communities, including Vietnamese, Laotian, Kurdish, Bosnian, Somali, Sudanese, Burmese, Cuban, and other communities made up of all religions, and many of whom arrived under the status of refugee. Thank you. Council Murray. Council Burr, thank you. I just have a, I just want to make a quick response to Council Mahalko. You know what? You're right. Resolutions were never offered to any of those groups. And you know what? That's a darn shame. But the thing is, is this came to us now, and we have an opportunity to do this right now. And just because in the past, other elected officials may not have done all that they could to make a statement, doesn't mean that we should stop. I'm going to give you an example, Council Mahalko. Since my first year on council, every year in June, I introduced a resolution honoring the graduating class of Binghamton High School. It's something I've done because I think it's important that we recognize our fall in high school. And when you came on council, you said, why is there not a resolution for students? And then you introduced it. And I never once stood up and said they never needed a resolution before. You said, you know what? You were wrong. And it should have happened then. Just like resolutions welcome to make the in a welcome city should have happened before then. We have a chance to do it right. Question for call. Councilman Masavage? Aye. Councilman Mihalko? Aye. Councilwoman Renia? Aye. Councilwoman Webb? Aye. Councilman Papastrat? Councilman Matzo? Nay. Councilman Berg? Nay. There are, there are three ayes and four nays. Nay. 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 Nay.
know it. 